I picked up the Cinder 160 or 200. I don't know. It says 160 all over the stuff online, but then it's got Arc 200 right there, and it goes up to 200 on the digital scale. So choose whichever one you want. This little guy is perfect for the little odds and ends around the house, the shop or whatever, and it is small enough that you can throw it in the trunk for emergencies. You know, all of the emergency welds that you have to do on the side of the road. Okay, let's get to some of the things that are pretty good about it. Well, first of all, it is a 110 or 220 volt, and you don't have to designate which one it's on. Just plug it in and it picks it for you. Something that lots of these manufacturers have been coming out with is saying IGBT, you know, technology. Uh, really, I think every inverter has that, so I don't think it's really anything new or special, but it was a big enough deal that they slapped it on the case. As I'm hooking this up, you can tell that these are not very long leads for both the ground clamp and the stinger and the power cord. Yeah, the power cord's actually only about four feet long. You do get an extra foot if you're plugging it into the 220. So keep that in mind. You get some short uh, lengths in your garage that you'll be running. Nice and easy DINs connections for quick setup and just like that, it's ready to go. On off switch and the power is in the back. Up to the front, you do have two knobs, one that does correspond to the amperage and that is what the digital display is. Whether that really is the amperage, I highly doubt it because it does go from zero up to 200. But I thought this was only 160, yeah. I don't know. Either way, I would take that more as a general range, not the actual amperage output. And the second one is arc force, which is really cool. They incorporate arc force and I can't tell the difference. <laughs> yes, I've turned it all the way down and all the way up, I tried running beads and I couldn't tell the difference um, even, even with striking it or running the bead. So maybe other models actually incorporate it. Um, it doesn't say anything about it in the owner's manual. Of course, this is only a four, four page owner's manual. I did test out a couple different rods. I ran some 6013, 7014, and 7018. It did run great for all of them. Uh, that is after adjusting the amperage slightly. As I mentioned, I don't think that's the true amperage output on here. Uh, just because it took, it was actually really hard to strike the arc with 332nd inch rod down at about 85. Whereas my other welders, you can strike a 332nd inch rod, you know, very simple at that amperage. It took uh, me getting up to about 115, 120 before I was actually able to get one and uh, lay a bead. You know what, for a hundred bucks, this thing's actually pretty fun and I'd say definitely worth getting. If you can deal with the short lead lengths or if you have other, you know, leads to go with it, great. The only other really complaint would be the amperage um, co control output. I don't know what to call it. I'm just going to call it the amperage range or scale. Uh, just don't go off of the digital display and you're good. Uh, that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.